Hi, welcome to another technology video. So today we're going to be showing you how you can set up your Buffalo Link Station. So we've got a Buffalo Link Station 500 device that's uh, got two discs. Um, we want to set them up for RAID 1 mirroring um, and then create some volumes on there. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to go to the Buffalo website, find your relevant device and then download um, what's called NAS Navigator for Windows. So once you've downloaded it, you should install it. Um, then you need to uh, connect your NAS device into your local network using a uh, RJ45 network cable and power up the unit. And then um, after a couple of minutes, you can run your Buffalo NAS Navigator and the device should appear in there and then we can go through and set everything up. So the first thing we want to do is once you've installed it is to open up NAS Navigator 2. It will find the device on your network and once it does it will give you all the relevant information that you've got here. So you will be able to connect to it directly from this IP address. So if I just show you that in progress. So if I open up a web browser and type in 192.168.0.111 that will take you to the start wizard, which does exactly the same as if you double click on the icon here. So we'll run through this on the link station. So the first thing that it's gonna to wanna to get you to do is to change your administrator password. So I'm gonna do that. And enter those in. As you can see here, takes a whole load of uh, characters, so make it a nice strong password, especially if you're gonna be installing it at customer sites so that um, none of the users can access it once it's in place. Next thing you wanna do is click on next, and we're gonna follow the wizard through basically. Don't wanna save the password. Okay, so there we've got our local user, um, and you can create additional users if you want to by clicking on the create user button, believe it or not. But we're gonna leave ours with admin, and then we're gonna run through, just step through the wizard. So we're gonna hide the username folder. And that's gonna then save to the device and then we should be able to access it. Okay, here we go. So it's creating all of the relevant uh, folders and structures for us. So we'll say okay to that. All right, so this is the one where um, you now need to make a decision on the RAID level for your device. Um, so our drive or our system has got uh, two one gig drives in, um, not a great deal of storage, but um, it's plenty for what we need it for. So at the moment we've got, um, we can uh, set it up as RAID one or RAID zero or linear, um, but uh, what we wanna do is to configure it for RAID one capacity. So that is um, writing to one disc and then mirroring it to the other disc so that if you get a disc failure, you will be able to recover. So we're gonna click on next. And we're gonna wait for the RAID to configure. Ice coffee especially during this heat. Okay, so that's RAID 1 configured. Now we're gonna enter our relevant time. So we are in London. So we're gonna select UTC, Dublin, Edinburgh, Lisbon, and London. We're gonna apply that configuration. That's now um, save to the device, the device will restart and then we should be able to access it to be able to start creating um, our volumes, users and file systems and shared, um, uh, shared folders. We can navigate back to our NAS Navigator, you can see it there, it's still got the same IP address, it's intelligent enough. Okay, so once you've, uh, once you've rebooted we can enter our credentials and we can log in. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to go to our disk manager and make sure that everything's okay. This gives you your 
um, drive devices and your RAID configuration checks. So you can see here RAID 1, 915 gig capacity because you lose some uh, and the available capacity is 855. So you lose quite a bit in terms of RAID and the settings, um, especially for a, for a sort of low volume amount such as one terabyte. Okay, so we go into our system settings and we can go into our folder setup. And this is where you can start creating your uh, folders that you want. At the moment, as you can see here, we've got a public folder. So if we want to add another folder, we can do so. Uh, we can create that, I don't know, let's call that, um, uh, I don't know, test. We want to create it on the uh, first array because we've only got one array and whether you want to enable the recycle bin or not and then what you want to be able to access it from. So we're going to say SMB which is Windows and Mac and AFP which is Mac. We don't want to enable FTP. Uh, we want to enable Time Machine Backup so we can do Time Machine Backups to it if we want to. DLNA so that's if you want to use that as um, uh, a media server so we don't want to use that and um, we also don't want to use it for backup. Um, if you want to enable access restrictions then you do so here so you click on enable and then if you've got multiple users you can say which users or groups you want to have access to which folders so it's pretty granular in terms of um, who gets access to what but obviously you need to make sure that you create your users first. So we're going to disable access restrictions we're going to have this available for everybody and then we can say OK. Now you should see, once it's created, you should see the options that we've uh, selected in this, uh, in this list here. So we're expecting to see no FTP and no DLNA, um, but we are going to be seeing SMB and AFP. There we go, so that's configured correctly. And then in terms of what's installed, so we can have a look at our applications, um, disk information, this is standard stuff that comes with it, system appearance, what windows you want to show, uh, the server information. You don't have the ability to load additional uh, applications on this device. So we'll go back into our sitting system settings and we'll have a look at SMB. And we're saying um, what the work group name is. So you can specify your own work group here. And AFP enabled, that's all it is basically, you just go through and tick the relevant boxes of what you want. Um, if you're going to be using BitTorrent then you can come in here and switch it on and web access, so if you want to access the device via, the, uh, via a web browser then you can do so here to access your files that is. Once again um, we've got our list of users under here and then groups, so if you've got a, a load of users um, what you can do is to create a group, pop those users into the group and then give the group access to certain files and folders. Power management and firmware, so you should always run through and make sure you've got the latest firmware before um, you deploy. Uh, and then backup, so this basically means that uh, um, if you've got another link station or terror station you can back, back this device up to that um, and these are the options to do that here. So um, once you've configured everything then you should be able to open up your file explorer and you should be able to find it on the network. So we'll just wait for this to uh, search through. As you can see it's already picked up the media server that is um, set up on the public folder. Uh, while that's running through that. I'm going to go back and check the network settings. So that's the host name. Network settings, we've got it configured to DHCP and we're using our default gateway as the DNS server. Don't need to test anything, but if you want to ping or trace route something, you can do that from here. And then if you want to enable wake on LAN, so um, you can, in the power settings, you can tell the disk to go to sleep when it's not in use. Um, this is a way of waking the device up so it'll sit there and 
um, wait for some activity on its network interface and then wake itself up. Okay, so let's have a look to see if it's found it. Yep, so it's found it now. So if we go back to our file explorer and double click on our drive, there we can see we've got the two folders. We've got the test um, file system or volume that I created, or shared folder, and then we've also got the public shared folder there. So, so if we go into our folder setup, and go into our test, and we want to put some access restrictions on it. So let's go and let's create a user first of all. So under our users, let's create, uh, let's do new test user and call this test123, test123. We save that and that's automatically going to put it in the users group, not the admin group. Okay, so that's our test user created. Now what we can do is we can go back to our um, configuration. We can go into our folder setup and we can say in here, we want to enable access restrictions. So for this um, shared folder, we want to give access to the admin user and we want to deny access for the test user. So let's okay that. So once this is done, we can then go back to our, um, uh, our file explorer and when we uh, open up the test shared folder, it should prompt us for a username and password. There we go. So this is, uh, this is basically now you need to have um, the username and password to access it. So we're going to do more choices and we're going to select a different username and this username was that admin could access it. So if we get now go in and change to the admin details, that will give us access. There we go. Um, and if we go into public, that's giving us access as well. So that's all you need to do in terms of creating your shared folder structure. Don't forget to create your users or your groups or both. Create your group first, then create your users, pop your users into the group and then give um, access to your relevant file systems for your groups and or users. If, if you only want to give um, specific users access to the uh, um, shared folders, then you can do that as well. So that's all there is to it. If you found the video useful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more technology videos. Thanks for watching.